Hello and welcome again to Lore of the Cards, the series that helps you discover the lore hidden in your Hearthstone deck. We've already had a quick look at the upcoming new heroes, but the lovely Hearthstone community team have asked if I could do some more detailed videos. So, without further hesitation, let's take an in-depth look at Magni Bronzebeard. Magni is part of the prestigious Bronzebeard clan. After the War of the Three Hammers, the civil war between the three dwarven clans, the Bronzebeards came out victorious and claimed the dwarven capital of Ironforge for their own. The Wildhammers would come to settle in Airy Peak after the second phase of the war made their former kingdom of Grimbatol uninhabitable. The bitter Dark Irons now reside predominantly round the Searing Gorge and Burning Steps, and many still hold a deep grudge towards the Bronzebeard clan. There are two ancestors of Magni that we know about in lore, other than his unnamed mother and father. Madaram Bronzebeard, who led the Bronzebeard to their victory in the War of the Three Hammers, and Elder Bronzebeard a seasonal quest giver in the world of Warcraft who appears during the Lunar Festival, a festival that commemorates the first defeat of the Burning Legion and is a time to remember one's ancestors. Elder is one of those remembered ancestors. Magni was the eldest of the three Bronzebeard brothers, Bran, Muradin and Magni. The brothers were extremely close and their familial bond transcended all others. While Magni would go on to be one of the greatest Dwarven rulers, his childhood was filled with trepidation. As the eldest son, Magni knew that one day he would become king, and he spent most of his early years worrying that he would not be able to become the leader that Ironforge deserved. This worry was so consuming that the great Magni would often find himself hoping that his father and brothers would outlive him, so that he would not have to assume the mantle of king. It turns out, Magni's fears were unfounded. Not only did he become a strong and inspirational fighter, he also became a sage ruler, more than up to the task of leading his people. The Bronzebeard Dwarves, like most dwarves in fantasy, base their culture and industry around mining, finding various precious ores and treasures as they dig deeper into the mountains that house their kingdoms. When Magni assumed the throne of Ironforge, he would change this. Ruins were discovered that informed the dwarves of their race's lost heritage, and Magni shifted the dwarves' industry from mining to archaeology eager to find out his people's heritage and the secrets of the ancient world. Magni and his two brothers Muradin and Bran would later co-found the Explorers League to explore every corner of Azeroth to learn about their race's origins and make some other discoveries along the way. While dwarves and humans had always been close since discovering each other, sharing ideas and inventions, this bond was strengthened further with the arrival of the Orcs from the world of Draenor through the Dark Portal. The first war between Orcs and humans was over quickly, the mighty kingdom of Stormwind falling before the relentless assault of the Orcs. Those that survived the raising of Stormwind fled to the kingdom of Lordaeron, and here was where the alliance began, initially just the joining of the human kingdoms. Magni saw that the Horde posed a great threat to all races of Azeroth, so sent his two brothers to pledge the Bronzebeard Dwarves to the human war effort. Magni was right, the Orcs posed a substantial threat, and the Second War saw many parts of his kingdom destroyed. The Orcs' military resources extended through trolls and goblins joining the Horde. Despite suffering great losses to his kingdom, Magni's capital of Ironforge did not fall, its ancient impenetrable gates holding fast. During the war, the dwarves committed their stout warriors and their allied gnomes superior technology to the war effort. The dwarves' knowledge for explosives also came in handy, dwarven demolition squads breaching many horde defences and bravely sacrificing their own lives if the situation turned grim. With the betrayal of Gul'dan, the Horde's final assault on the Kingdom of Lordaeron failed. Helping the humans press their advantage, Magni once again sent his most capable and trusted fighters, 
his two brothers. While the Alliance did lose an inspirational leader in Anduin Lothar during the Battle of Black Rock Mountain, the Horde's base of operations, Torellium, along with Bran and Muradin as lieutenants, drove home a decisive victory against the Horde that saw the trolls and goblins leave the faction and many of the orcs pushed back through the Dark Portal from whence they came. After the Alliance successfully defeated the Orcs and pushed back a renewed invasion, Magni's brother Muradin travelled to Northrend. Muradin had gained a fascination with the continent, its harsh environment and intriguing inhabitants. He had also caught wind of a legendary blade by the name of Frostmorn and decided to hunt for it. Muradin met Arthas, Prince of Lordaeron in Northrend. The Eastern Kingdoms had recently been plagued by a curse of undeath, and Arthas was hunting the demon allegedly responsible for the plague, Malganis. Muradin, a friend of Arthas's, who had taught the young prince a lot about his fighting technique, agreed to aid the prince. During their hunt for Malganis, they also found Frostmorn, their last hope for surviving Malganis's undead army. Behold, Muradin. Our salvation. Frostborn. Halt, lad. There's an inscription on the dais. It's a warning. It says, Whomsoever takes up this blade shall wield power eternal. Just as the blade rends flesh, so must power scar the spirit. Oh, I should have known. The blade is cursed. Let's get the hell out of here. I would gladly bear any curse to save my homeland. Oh, leave it be, Arthas. Forget this business and lead your men home. Damn the men! Nothing shall prevent me from having my revenge, old friend. Not even you. Now, I call out to the spirits of this place. I will give anything or pay any price. If only you will help me save my people. When Magni heard of his brother's death, he was consumed by grief. Just as the now corrupted Arthas began to prepare for an invasion on the Eastern Kingdoms on behalf of the true ruler of the undead Scourge, the Lich King. He had driven Arthas mad and claimed his soul, whispering to the prince through the Runeblade Frostmorn. While Magni was grief-stricken, he and his brother Bran bared through the pain, knowing that the Dwarven Kingdom would be looking to them for guidance. Magni was given an outlet for his grief when Alexandrus Mograine and High Inquisitor Fairbanks came to Ironforge. Alexandrus had previously discovered an orb of great dark power during the fight at Black Rock Mountain from an orcish warlock he had slain. When he touched it, its dark energy deformed his arm. Many years later, the Knights of the Silver Hand channeled the Holy Light into the orb, turning it into an artifact of great holy power and healing Mograine's arm. Alexandra sought Magni as he knew that the King would be able to forge this orb into a weapon to combat the ever-increasing threat of the undead Scourge. Magni accepted the task, as crafting a weapon would be like spitting in Arthas's eye and a way of avenging the death of his beloved brother. There are dwarves that believe master blacksmiths possess the ability to impart emotions into the work they create. Magni had never taken stock in this belief, but as he placed the holy orb onto his anvil, he thought of his brother that he would never see again. Grief Rage and a desire for vengeance surged through Magni, the dwarf willing them into being. With a great war cry, he brought his hammer down upon the orb, flattening it out and incorporating it into a blade that would become known as one of the greatest blades in the Warcraft universe, the Ashbringer. As Magni finished the blade, a Griffin Rider messenger informed him of even more tragic news to befall the Alliance. The King of Lordaeron, whom Magni respected greatly, 
had been murdered in his own throne room by his son, Arthas. Magni informed Alexandrus and Fairbanks of the news. Upon their return, their kingdom would be in a state of chaos. Magni compassionately advised the two humans that war could wait. Their top priority should be ensuring the safety of their friends and loved ones. Following Magni's advice, Alexandrus was able to reunite with his two sons, Darian and Renault. Alexandrus did Magni proud, slaughtering legions of the undead with his blade. The sword became known as Ashbringer because it cut through the abhorrent undead with such ease, reducing them to mere ash. The Scourge were unrelenting and claimed many parts of the Eastern Kingdoms as their own, but like the Orcs before them, they were unable to penetrate Magni's Bastion of Ironforge. The Dwarves once again committed their mastery of explosives to the Alliance's cause. Riflemen made up the backbone of the Alliance army, and Mortar teams blew the undead infantry apart. Magni too joined in the fight. Sometime during the war, he met and fought alongside the Pandaren, Chen Stormstout, declaring the monk a friend of the Kingdom of Ironforge, while tossing back a few brews, as all dwarves and Pandaren can find pleasure in a fine ale. The Eastern Kingdom saw some peace after the Third War, though they remained in turmoil. The Scourge had been a preemptive force for the second coming of the Burning Legion that sought to reduce Azeroth to ash. They were defeated by the combined might of the Alliance and Horde. Arthas claimed Lordaeron as his own, but he was not there long as the Lich King was being attacked. So he left for Northrend, leaving Kel'Thuzad to watch over his kingdom. With the Lich King weakened, the Scourge did lose ground in the Eastern Kingdoms, but still maintained possession of the Plaguelands. Magni only had one child, Moira, and even though he did love his daughter, he had wanted a son. As his only child, Moira would one day sit on the throne of Ironforge. Magni honoured the right of succession, so there was no way he would ever dispute this when the time came. However, he wanted a son as he did not believe that a woman could rule as effectively as a man. Moira picked up on this view as she never felt she was treated with the respect she deserved. This changed for Moira when she was captured by the Bronzebeard's rivals the Dark Iron Clan. While in prison, Moira was treated with the respect befitting her position by the Dark Iron Emperor Dagran Thorisan. This refreshing respect caused Moira to look upon the ruler of the rival clan in a different light, and the two eventually fell in love and married. When word of this union reached Magni, he became convinced that Dagran had won his daughter over with foul sorcery and immediately started seeking help to save her from the Dark Irons. Not only this, the Dark Iron Dwarves had grown more bold, making a move for the Thandol Span, important bridges that acted as a key trade route between the Dwarven and Human Kingdoms. Recently, the lost King of Stormwind, Varian Rin, had returned to his throne, released from capture. Magni had also been sent word by Jaina Proudmoore that she had discovered the real Varian Rin, an amnesiac gladiator currently going by the name of Logosh. Magni decided to travel to Stormwind himself to request aid for the Thandol Span, but also sent Thargus Anvilmar to meet with Logosh at Menethil Harbour. Magni was dismayed when he met with the supposed King of Stormwind. While he and Bolvar Fordragon discussed the threats to their kingdoms, Varian sat there glazing over. Bolvar had concerns about the Blackrock Orcs at their borders. Magni made a compelling argument that the Dark Irons were in fact the primary concern for both kingdoms, for if they controlled the Thandol Span, trade between dwarves and humans would be greatly reduced. Not only this, but the Dark Irons had the backing of their fiery overlord, Ragnaros. The meeting was rudely interrupted by Katarana Prestor, another of Varian's advisors. Prestor accused Magni of trying to drag the human kingdom into a war with the Dark Irons over his personal feud. 
due to his daughter's union and rumoured pregnancy by Thorisan. While this no doubt weighed heavily on Magni's mind, he would always put his people's needs before his own, so was deeply offended by this remark. Either way, Prestor informed the king they would receive no backing for his personal feud. The meeting ended, Marion seemed to wake up, stating, Enough doom and gloom, I've scheduled a boar hunt. Having no time to, and not being in the mood to hunt, an angered Magni headed back towards Ironforge. Bolvar tried to calm the Dwarven King, but it was difficult when both men had doubts that this was the real King of Stormwind. As Magni was leaving, Varian's son Anduin spoke with him, quickly informing the King that he did not believe the man on the throne was his father. Magni was inclined to agree with the astute boy. He had known Varian before his disappearance, and he had not been so apathetic or been easily controlled by another like Prestor. Their conversation was interrupted by Varian and Prestor, and interrupted yet again when one of Magni's men brought the news that the Dark Irons had seized the Thandol span. Magni turned to Varian for help, but realised he'd have to do this on his own. Magni hired a goblin zeppelin and set out with his rifleman, heading straight for the span to see if they could save it and any captive dwarves. Not a method of transport Magni was fond of, most bronzebeard dwarves tend to prefer their feet squarely on the ground. They arrived to find the Dark Irons already in a state of disarray, and Magni was able to direct his rifleman to take out several Dark Irons, the rest having to retreat. When Magni landed on the bridge, he found Thargus, Logosh, Brol, and Valera. These four adventurers alone had been enough to send the Dark Irons into a state of panic. After teasing Thargus that he was told to take Logosh to Ironforge, he thanked the four adventurers, as if not for them, it was likely the Dark Irons would have destroyed the bridge. Back at Ironforge, a black dragon made an attempt on Logosh's life but Valera saved him. This confirmed reports that Magni had been hearing that the Black Dragonflight may have something to do with the False King on the throne of Stormwind. The man that had given the reports was Reginald Windsor, and in conversation with Bolvar via scrying glass, Magni discovered Windsor had been captured. Logosh and companions went to save Windsor, and asked Magni to keep an eye on Valera, as she was suffering from a fell magic addiction. Magni locked her in a cell away from any sources of magic. Upon their return, the group had found Anixia had placed the fake king upon the throne, and manipulated him in her human form, Katarana Prestor. Magni remained in Ironforge as Varian went to reclaim his kingdom, slaying Onyxia. The fake king had actually been a part of Varian, split from him by Onyxia, and the two were finally made whole again. Magni resolved to save his daughter from Dagran. He assembled a team of adventurers to infiltrate the Blackrock Depths and assassinate Thorisan. They succeeded, but were shocked to discover that Moira had willingly stayed by Dagran's side and refused to travel with the adventurers, a passionate hatred now burning within her for them, and her father. When told this, Magni was also informed Moira had had a son by Thorisan. Magni was shocked and dismayed that the son of a Bronzebeard and a Dark Iron would one day assume the throne. Even with this, he could not bring himself to disinherit his daughter, hoping that one day she would return to him in Ironforge. Magni learned from this, and came to respect dwarven women a lot more, even hiring some to key military roles. He realised that his sexist attitude towards his own daughter had not been fair, and that due to his short-sightedness, he may never see her again. When Arthas travelled to Northrend, he bound with the Lich King and entered a deep sleep. When he awoke, he sent forces to the kingdoms of Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Magni sent help to his human allies, and the Alliance resolved to take the fight to the Lich King. Magni made another promise to himself, that he would travel to Northrend and try and find any traces of his brother Muradin. After years of bad news, Magni would finally receive some good word. 
While a successful campaign against the Lich King was fought, Magni and Bran were reunited with their brother they had thought was dead. After being left to die by Arthas, Muradin, remembering little of who he was, wandered the tundras of Northrend. He was discovered by the Frostborn Dwarves that took him in and gave him the name Jorg Stormheart after he single-handedly slew a giant Jormunger. He eventually became King of the Frostborn. When Bran found his brother, Muradin's memories came flooding back and Magni very soon after joined the happy reunion. After this, Magni returned home and the Lich King was defeated. When back at Ironforge, Magni was able to aid Lily find her uncle Chen, supplying her and her companion Strongbow with a zeppelin to fly to Kalimdor. This was to thank them for repelling a Dark Iron attack on that year's Brewfest. Magni had come to defend the festival that paid respect to good ale, only to find the Dark Irons had already been repelled. As the elements of Azeroth shifted into a state of unrest, a herald for the return of Deathwing, Magni sought to discover why this was, and met with other Alliance leaders in the city of Stormwind. He planned to discover the world's distress by using the Tablets of Ulduar, tablets created by the Titans who had shaped Azeroth, that Bran had discovered while in Northrend. They were written in the Earthen language, the ancestors of the Dwarves. These stone constructs had been created by the Titans to help them shape Azeroth. They were later inflicted by the Curse of Flesh, a creation of the Old Gods that turned their stone bodies to ones of flesh and blood, making it easier for the Old Gods to corrupt them. The new fleshy Earthen were the Dwarves. After Magni travelled back to Ironforge, the elements convulsed into further unrest, elementals attacking his city. Magni himself joined the fray and successfully repelled the invasion, but the elemental unrest worsened even further, violent earthquakes splitting the lands around Ironforge and killing many innocent Dwarves. As Magni pored over what to do about these natural disasters, Anduin Rin was currently visiting Magni's kingdom. Magni placed Anduin into Erin's care, one of the first women to be invited to join the Dwarven Honor Guard after Magni confronted his own prejudice. Erin trained and befriended Anduin, but died when another freak earthquake hit Ironforge. After her death, Magni gifted Anduin with the Fearbreaker, a Bronzebeard family heirloom. The very next day, Magni had had enough of the earthquakes and decided to selflessly undergo the Titan ritual outlined in the Tablets of Alduar to discover the source of the quakes. Anduin and several others accompanied the king deep into the heart of Ironforge. Magni drank a potion of Mountain Silver Sage, Black Lotus and Ghost Mushroom and uttered these words in the earthen tongue. Within me is the earth itself. We are one. I am of it, and it of me. I listen for the mountain's reply. Magni heard hundreds of voices. Maybe among these would be the answer he sought. But the ritual had not yet been thoroughly researched by Magni's teams, and an unexpected result occurred. Magni did indeed become one with his beloved mountain home, becoming petrified as solid diamond. The tablet was far more literal than the translators had thought, and as a result, Ironforge had lost their beloved king. Magni's funeral service followed shortly after. Alliance, goblins and even members of the Horde were sent by Thrall to show their respects for this great inspirational leader. Magni had made very few mistakes as a ruler, but one did come back to haunt his people. Moira returned, claiming the throne as hers and preventing anyone from leaving the city. King Varian attacked Ironforge to release the trapped dwarves and his son Anduin. To help Moira better rule her people, as she was Magni's rightful heir, the Council of Three Hammers was created. Moira would represent the Dark Irons, Muradin the Bronzebeards, and Falstad the Wild Hammers. While a funeral service was held for Magni, his presence in Azeroth appears not to have left. Thrall was able to sense a presence under the mountains of Karl's Modan. 
a strong spirit that appeared to be a mortal that had transcended the bonds of flesh that now held silent vigil over the mountains and spoke in a dwarven accent. For behold, we are earthen. Oh, the land and its soul is ours. Its pain is ours. Its heartbreak is ours. And no, I'm not going to attempt a dwarven accent. So, there you have it. The first in our more detailed episodes of the heroes coming to Hearthstone. If you have enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Sharing this series around and telling your friends makes you even more awesome. If you like the art in the video, I've done my best to credit the artists in the description below, so check them out. Next time, we'll be looking at the new hunter hero, Illyria Windrunner. Till then, happy Hearthstoning, guys.